Uh, we have a lot of Cisco people in the room. I'm going to have them raise their hands so that you know who the Cisco people are. So, hands up. So, if you look around, there's Cisco people all over the place to uh, chat with you, have a conversation with you, and you can kind of figure out what everybody's about. Some of them will be presenting today, some will just be in the room. Uh, but if you need to uh, uh, talk to somebody, just find one of those people and uh, they'll make themselves available to you. Uh, to talk about their area and their specialty. Uh, you'll see most of them up here, but not all of them. Uh, so we'll go through that. Uh, a little bit about today. If I hit the button in the right order, there we go. Uh, and basically, if you've been here before, the concept of the users group meeting is just to share ideas amongst, uh, from Cisco to you. The topics are usually picked from things that we've seen over the course of the last year two years, three years, whatever, ongoing issues, ongoing situations. Uh, <laughs> so that's what's happening. Uh, and amongst yourselves. So share your ideas, share your comments, uh, share them with us uh, so that we know what's going on. Uh, learn about what's happening at Cisco. Uh, I had one of my vendors call me the other day and they said, we heard Cisco got sold. Uh, I guess they've been in a box for about seven years because that's when it was sold, it was six or seven years ago. Uh, that hasn't changed. Uh, they had the information a little backwards. They thought one of the companies that my partner owns owned us. And I said, well, my partners and I own Cisco, and they also own that other company you're talking about. So it's not, you know, there's no relation there other than the common ownership. Uh, but that's a, things you hear out there. So we were just giving you information that uh, you need. Uh, we're all here to listen and, and pay attention to what's going on, so that's kind of the concept. Uh, put your face to a name so you know that when you're on the phone and you're talking about Salerno, that you know he's that guy way back in the corner over there that's the head of our engineering department. Um, and so uh, if you're talking to Lisa Anderson, she's sitting over here, at least raise your hand. I'll pick out these people periodically because she's someone that's customer uh, support, customer service. Uh, I want to introduce Ray, because most of you know him, but he's also going to be talking in a few minutes. Uh, and he's doing training classes this week. That's going on as well. All right. And then if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, hopefully you came with a list of questions or comments or just things you wanted to go through. If you ever have any, uh, any topics that you need or anything you need to, to get to us, uh, you can obviously pick up the phone and call us. You can email us if you want to. Uh, or on our website, there's now a, a few avenues where you can uh, send us information. Uh, the most obvious one is one called info. So if you go to the info sheet and fill it out on the online, the information will go to the appropriate person inside of our company. I know that because they all come to me. And then I will send them to the appropriate person in the company. That's how that works. Uh, so the info. Uh, site on our website if you ever want to send something to us that's how we can do that so we get information from you and then we can get information back to you uh we have people order parts that way they decided that that's easier to try to remember orders at cisco.com so whatever that is uh, that you do you can use that to get to it all right the schedule uh if you didn't pick one up i put some uh agendas outside on the table out to, right outside the door uh, so you have those Oh, but this is uh, the basic agenda. We have a couple of topics this morning. Uh, automated CTA familiarity system, we're going to talk about that. Uh, Knox computer efficiency tester, big black box over here on the corner. Uh, Glenn's been working on that for a while now. Uh, it's been his baby for some time. Uh, we'll introduce that in a little bit. Uh, Analyzer World, what's new, what's going on? Uh, we're going to let Ray talk about that. I'm actually going to talk about that a little bit later on. From a different perspective, and Ray talks about it. Uh, a little bit on the analyzer side, I think we'll break. There'll be some uh, food and stuff that'll bring in back here. I'm not sure what it is. Somebody ordered that. Uh, I have multiple assistants to take care of the thing. Uh, then we're going to talk about system troubleshooting. Eric's going to be here to talk about that. Eric Anderson uh, recently retired and then changed his mind and came back. Uh, which is kind of funny because he went around the world telling everybody he was going to retire, and then the week he was going to retire, he said, I can't do it. Uh, so he's still working for us. So he's going to come in and talk a little bit. 
Uh, Kevin's going to be here to talk about Cedar Software. Uh, Karen's going to come over. If you don't know Karen, she's our controller. Uh, but she's in charge of all of our purchasing and our parts department and things as well. So she's going to talk about spare parts. Then we have our lunch. Uh, then the customer discussions with us just go around, as I talked about earlier. Uh, then Wes is going to talk about our service contract. Wes is our new uh, head of field service. Wes Kirk. We have two first names, so we're <laughs> Wes Kirk. Uh, and then uh, Rich is going to talk about the nationwide. No, that's kind of guess. The nationwide compliance guidelines, overview, all that stuff. Oh, that's right. Then the ECMPS upgrades and repurposing of the ECMPS, however that's working. The re engineering effort, Kevin's going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, end of life products, I'll be back and talk about that uh, for a brief bit. And then at the end of the day, we talk about uh, what happens if you switch stuff out? How does that all play out? What takes place with all of that? Uh, that's actually going to be a group effort, but I think Bob's going to run the, the show on that one and go all the back and point out all the things that we know as we go around. And, uh, we have a whole team of people here to talk to and you can ask questions about. And then any other questions and answers for me today, we have that. Uh, some personnel changes at Cisco for those of you that have been around with us for a while. Uh, these are just some new faces. Wes Kirk, he's a proposal engineer, but he's also a field service manager. Wes raised his hand a little while ago. If you're missing, don't worry, we have a talking. Uh, Jared Atencio, analyzer of tech. Is that Jared? He's here. He was here. Yeah, he was here. He was sitting back there. Uh, he stepped out. Uh, Luis Macupa, Luis, I think he's somewhere. He's up there. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, he's up at the plant site right now. He's in field service tech, so if you have some field service people come to your site, he's one of those guys. Uh, Alex. Uh, I was probably up to the police, but <laughs> uh, during the uh, thing. Josh Frisby is a uh, new PLC engineer. He's new, uh, but if you're calling into the office and you need some PLC work, you may get Josh on the phone, so that's uh, another new a member. Uh, Rich is not new, Richard Gretana, but uh, he's not new, but he used to be in the analyzer shop, but he shifted back to his love, uh, which is in the software and the PLC world. So. He's a good guy of analyzers and MPLCs, so uh, if you pick up the phone and call him about PLC work, uh, Rich is there. He's not uh, he's not new to Cisco by any means, but he is in a good position within there. And then Jeff Slavin, Jeff just joined us recently after 20 years in the Army. Uh, he's uh, in our software support role, and uh, he's only been here three, four weeks now. Not been very long. Uh, pretty new to there. Uh, and then a couple of uh, Announcements, I guess, for people that you may have known. Brad Shabata uh, was a field service guy, a PLC guy that was around for a very long time. Brad retired last year and uh, walked away. Good to see you. I have not heard from him, so I assume that's good. Uh, and he must be doing well. And then Len has officially retired since the last year's group meeting, uh, but he still shows up for it. So, whatever that means, Len's back there. Len's the founder of the company. Uh, back in 1985. So uh, he founded the company uh, and he's retired, but periodically on Tuesdays and Wednesdays we see him. Uh, and he has special projects that he works on and he's going to talk about it again here in a little bit. And he's done a few other things around the office too. So those are some changes. I might have missed something, but I don't think so. I think that's pretty the best over the last two years what we've uh, seen the change. Uh, we do have a new website. If you haven't been out to the new website lately, it's all new. It's uh, much nicer than the old website. It's actually makes sense. You can get, find your way around things and get links that actually work. Uh, so that's good. And then uh, the parts ordering, just as a reminder, if you ever need parts, you can email orders at ciscosense.com. That's a uh, group uh, of people who actually take those orders and put that on a daily basis. Uh, We've switched our parts order and we've got a lot of parts in stock. Like everyone else, uh, it's a challenge these days to keep parts and get parts, and some things are really backlogged. I told somebody the other day, if they want an analyzer, I've got to take it four weeks. You want a PLC high level module? Give me 180 days. Seriously. We used to be able to walk across the street, basically, and get a PLC part in time. Now it's a six month deep. So, uh, 
But we do stock uh, about half a million dollars worth of parts. So if you need something, we usually have what you need. For the most part, we, we don't stock any of that. Obviously, for the example, but the rest of the stuff. Uh, phone system uh, is updated. We have an automatic system. And then uh, everybody always asks about the after hours system. It's going to change in the near future, but right now the after hours system, you just dial the main number and hit four. And then it'll give you a little prompt with a message, and then whoever on call uh, will get a message from that message from you, and they'll call the client back and go from there. So that's how that works. So after hours, zero three seven nine zero one thousand, hit four, and then it goes. We're going to add a, a second half of that uh, sometime in the next couple of months, where four will be for hardware support, five will be for software support, uh, because there's no sense in getting our analyzers have to be all in the software after hours, so that doesn't make more sense. So not really any reason to get our software guys interested in your analyzer process. So, so we're going to make those changes here. All right. This question came up the other day, and uh, there's a history behind this. Uh, I remember we were at Epiray Fist. Uh, I remember we were at Epiray Fist nine yeah. years ago. The Upper Users Consensus Conference and Dave Williams came running out of the hall saying, What's going to blow a gasket when he sees what this guy just told the world that Cisco didn't exist? Uh, he had misinformation in, in the EPA website about the market share that everyone holds. Uh, and the only way to monitor that on a national database situation is through the 40 CFR 75 compliance database. So it, I can't tell you how many people have. Uh, Mining sounds at chrome mines. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how many people have uh, sounds of industrial boilers because nobody tracks all that information. He's out there monitoring all this on a national basis. So, what they track is who has the software out there on all 40 CFR 75 power plants. And since that's about 85% of our business, we kind of know that that's probably where. Good representation of what we are. So somebody asked me on the phone the other day, it was a big customer of ours that had launched the plans with us, and they said, What is Cisco's market share in the industry? So me being me, I asked somebody to research it and find out. So here's a little chart. Uh, this is all the software side of things, but there's about 20 plants out there that have our hardware that have ESC software. Uh, Environmental Systems Corporation there in Boston, Texas. Uh, but the ESC software has our hardware because they didn't have their own hardware for a long time. Uh, well, they did, and then they didn't, and now they do, and it's kind of crazy. They can't make up their mind. Uh, and of course, we have our software on other people's hardware. So it, it kind of balances itself out as far as I go. So ESC, which has a large stake out there, they have a lot of utilities. Uh, Especially a lot of good old coal plants and things have ESC software on uh, Tennessee Valley Authority and some others uh, have ESC software. So they're a big chunk there, the 36, they've been around a long time. We're second at 15%. Uh, and then KBB, Entertech used to be Babcock, Wilcox used to be GE, used to be KBB, Entertech. Got purchased recently by Suntech, if you didn't know that, now you do. Uh, the funny part about that was Suntech was an offshoot of KDB Intertech originally because when they sold the GE, a bunch of employees bought Suntech. So that's how it worked. Uh, and they turned around and bought them back, basically. And now they're the boss. And uh, they have about a 12% share. And then there's a few others. So Teledyne Modernized them and Spectrum Systems. Have a few. Spectrums are probably going to go away because Spectrum got bought by ESC. And so Spectrum software is being replaced by the ESC software, so that's probably going to be absorbed here in the next few years uh, into the ESC uh, bucket. But we'll see how that goes because I have a couple of customers calling me saying, well, now that we have to get rid of Spectrum, we're thinking about making a change. So uh, we may have to see some changes here. In the, in the future. But anyway, that came up and I said, you know what, uh, I'll throw it up here just as a I don't know, advertisement or something. I don't know where the second was. is. I'm a supplier in the country. Uh, we're probably one of the largest, actually. Uh, 
on that end because we do full sends and the world is up. So, yeah. so welcome. Uh, that's our introduction for today. Next up, Bob's going to talk uh, about our first topic, which is automated CJ and linearity racks, and give you an explanation as to why, but basically, what automates all this? How does that work? 